you'd like to have an elegant alphabet in your sign lettering quiver, this Roman italic is your answer. Um, it's really a pretty alphabet and can be done many different ways and styles. But once you get the, the bare bones of it, the, it really is a fun letter to execute. Um, this intro video is going to cover getting prepped for lettering and also um, getting prepped for lettering this specific Roman italic. And uh, right now I'm painting on a piece of uh, panel that has been prepped and painted, striped, and now I'm lettering this uh, Roman italic. And uh, get yourself uh, some kind of an easel set up. Also make sure that you're very comfortable. Uh, one of the things I've learned is to put the uh, with the uh, center of your guidelines ab about where the bottom of your neck ends. And that seems to really help execute both descenders and ascenders very well. It's a very comfortable position. And then uh, what I do is I use a paper cup. I trim one edge of that paper cup to make a nice sharp edge so that I can palette my uh, brush, my lettering brush on the edge of that. And I'm going to put a little bit of black lettering enamel one shot in there. And I do not use uh, lacquer thinner or thinners. I use reducers, which is much more superior as far as consistency and brush handling. And I get it to the point just before it starts to run. Too runny and it'll run down your project panel and too stiff, like that's too stiff, and you're gonna be frustrated with skipping and, and rough edges and things like that. So I always get it to the point where it's just running just like that, just when it starts to run. Um, and then what I do is I put on a cotton glove, and this glides my hand over my flat mall stick like almost like being right on the uh, surface of a table. It's very comfortable and I, I, ha I used to use the round mall stick quite a bit but when I changed over to this flat mall stick I found it to be much more uh, comfortable and actually uh, able to execute my letters much more uh, quickly, cleanly and more easy. I'm always looking for an easier way to do something so there's my palette with the cup going in there, three by five card section for paletting. And uh, that's where you can see I'm just able to glide right over. I couldn't do that with a bare hand uh, unless I put powder or something on my hand. And then I, for comfort, I just uh, rounded off, notched in where my fingers go. And this allows me to comfortably letter for a long period of time. Um, and then I use a Kafka quill brush, Steve Kafka quill brush and this I'll be using a letter num number two. This is a template made from a page that was, in, that was grayed out, enlarged, printed with a digital printer, laminated with matte laminate and then uh, mounted onto a piece of panel, uh, aluminum composite panel. This allows you to uh, get muscle memory going with these letters and you can use this panel over and over and over again because the lettering enamel comes right off with lacquer thinner. But you want to be within a, take it off within about 20 minutes otherwise it starts to really set up on there. And that's a great way to uh, develop your muscle memory. And also once you get started with the lettering, practice, practice, practice. Um, you can never practice enough. So I built this for my living room where I use water-based paint and either uh, show card brush or Utrex uh, watercolor brushes. This is cell vinyl, black cell vinyl, and a Utrex uh, watercolor brush. And <clears throat> watercolor obviously isn't the same as lettering enamel, but this is an opportunity for you to sit in your living room, watch the news, and just execute letter after letter after letter and develop this muscle memory and every single letter, shape of the letter, everything. You, what you want to do is just keep storing it into your mind, storing it in your, so it just becomes automatic. You'll be able to letter on anything, a bathroom door, side of a, a vehicle, um, anytime, any place. It will always be in your head. So that's why this 
constant um, doing it over and over and over again is so important. Uh, and also uh, changing the sizes. I'll go from three inch to about you know one inch or so. And I usually fill up a page, and filling up a page here will take me about 15, 20 minutes. And also, I will uh, also practice on uh, aluminum composite panel as well. And that is a type of material that you can get at pretty much any uh, commercial sign shop. In fact, is they, uh, they probably throw away uh, you know, pounds and pounds of scraps of this stuff. And uh, I use a lot of it myself, so I always have scraps of this ACP. This is what you see right now, and I practice on that uh, a lot. I'll just grab those, and it's and it's a multi-surface, but it's very smooth. And one usually one side is matte finish, and the other side is a gloss finish, and that enables you to be able to practice on those two different types of surfaces. Now, I will say that if you want anything permanent on here, you're going to have to sand it. This has a polyester coating on it, and the, the one shot and it will not uh, adhere or stay on this. Spray paints, lacquer paints will, but it's iffy. The best thing to do is hit it with sandpaper if you want to make a permanent project out of one of these panels. Otherwise, I just, I just letter on it and toss it. Um, and then as far as layout goes, uh, what I'll be doing is two and a half inch tall letters. And what I do is I just use a grease pencil and just lay it out on this uh, paneling. And it's two and a half to the caps. And then I just have in my mind 65% to the top of the lower case. So the baseline is the bottom of the letters or the capitals. And about 65% roughly is what I like for the lowercase for these types of lettering, this Roman italic. It just, I just, it just seems to feel good. And then uh, the bottom, that bottom, I also mark down the uh, where the uh, descending stroke ends, and that's what I call the descender uh, base. And I also, apply, you know, just go ahead and line that out too. Uh, that way, I have all my lines to work with. I do this with everything, with numbers with figures, anything that I do, I'll do these four lines. It also creates my space for the next line. Finally, if you're using the pencil method for holding your brush, I would like to highly recommend that you switch over to the three-fingered method of holding the brush, where you're using your middle finger, forefinger, and thumb to hold the brush perpendicular to the surface of your panel or project. It is just such a much more superior uh, way of controlling the brush and executing letters than the pencil method. Um, you're able to do rounds and uh, other, other uh, shapes of the letter and strokes of the letter uh, much more accurately and with much more control than you can with the pencil style of holding. Now here I'm holding it in the pencil style of lettering and uh, straight lines of course are, are not a, that much of an issue but when it comes to doing rounds we tend to get very creative in how we contort our hand to try to make the, the round as accurate as we can and even then the brush will fan out and create um, issues. Um, and it's just, it's just much more difficult to control, especially on smaller letters. Uh, this three-fingered uh, perpendicular uh, method of, of holding your brush just gives you so much, so much more control and accuracy. And you're able to spin the brush in your fingers clockwise and counterclockwise very easily this way. Uh, like anything, it takes some time to get used to, but once you do, you'll find that it is a much better way of holding your, uh, holding your brush and executing letters. Doing these fronts of the Bs uh, are really, a, really easy when you're using this type of method. It's just, there's just so much more control and uh, it's also the reason why I be sure that my guidelines are at that neckline level, just below my neck, 
because doing this way, doing it in this way, in this fashion, you need to be able to look over the top of your brush and fingers. Whereas in the pencil method, you're like this, it's, you're pretty much at a 45 degrees. So it's a, and the brush is above your hand, the end of the brush is above your hand. So you're able to see it. Um, but with adjusting your panel or yourself so that your guidelines are below your, or at your uh, bottom of your neckline, uh, you can easily see over the top of your hand and execute these. And so in a letter like this, this Egyptian condensed O, I can easily uh, rotate my brush clockwise and counterclockwise wise to uh, create the uh, stroke width evenly um, on both sides of the letter. My goal was to try to take the mystery out of each of the strokes of this alphabet. What I've learned is that when you flatten out your brush like this, executing these letters is, is uh, much easier. If you come down at it like at a 45 degree angle uh, with the brush and uh, like you're slicing into the panel or the, or the surface that you're painting, uh, it gives you a nice beginning and end and it keeps you from getting this blob of paint at the beginning of your stroke. So in each of the strokes, I, I try to come down like I'm actually slicing down into it rather than just dropping my brush down. And this is an, a lowercase i, and this is just coming down and swooping around and make, to make the shape. But then to make the uh, uh, other side of the thick stroke, I, I ins insert the brush so that it's at that junction at the very top to make a nice point, come down, and then I spun the brush counterclockwise to make that um, finishing uh, taper. And then I just use it for this terminal. I just come down again at a, with the brush kind of at a 45 and then just try to slice down into it. And that makes a really nice beginning of the terminal. And of course, there's always going to be touch up to most of the letters we're, we're going to do. For the dot of the eye, I do the same thing to make the, to make the ellipse. I, I start at the top of the dot and just try to make uh, the left side of the ellipse with, uh, with you know, the same idea in mind where I come down at 45 and then just draw it around. <clears throat> so basically I'm just thinking about drawing the outline of the letter whenever I'm doing these letters. And I'll go into more detail letter by letter. But these are going to be the basic strokes. I'm going to do an A next. And uh, this is a lowercase a. These are the basic strokes of this alphabet um, to really master. And if you did like a whole bunch of these on a page, it would really be beneficial and just kind of uh, help get you acclimated to this, this alphabet really well. <clears throat> so I'm just uh, doing the same thing. I'm just drawing the outside of the uh, shape of this lowercase a. And I had a little trouble there for some reason. I don't know what happened. But... Uh, then I just come down and, you know, always, always draw into the last line you've done. To, it makes a cleaner transition. I flatten my brush out, start at the top, and do the same thing. I try to try to taper in, like slice down into the surface to create the uh, this thick stroke. And then when I come down, I, I you know push down, then I let up and release. And I also twisted the brush clockwise down at that end. So we'll do the same thing with the uh, stem of the lowercase a. The top, get a nice flat brush so you have a nice flat top of this stem. Come down, spin the brush clockwise and release. Flatten out and uh, your brush again. Start at the top. And I'm always going to double stroke the uh, thick strokes. Come down, Spin the brush clockwise and release. You have to do a little touch up here. And then the same thing with this terminal. Flatten the brush, come down, hold about a 45, come down and just slice into it to come down and meet your point. 
this seemed to have been the the best way to for me to uh, create these strokes so hope that's helpful the goal for this roman italic video series is to take the mystery out of each of these letters stroke by stroke three letters at a time and i hope that there'll be an inspiration and help to you thank you so much for watching happy painting